Masters 101. We're going to be talking about some of the basics, but we often talk about leadership in Toastmasters. So I'm going to focus quite a lot on that tonight and talk about some of the ways that we can take advantage of the leadership opportunities in Toastmasters. And as Leanna mentioned, if you have questions, please ask, you just unmute and shout out and interrupt me, whatever. I, I tend to be informal when I present and I would much rather have you ask a question at the time when it's relevant and we understand the context of the question then 20 minutes later you ask me well back 20 minutes ago when you said such and such well i don't remember what i said 20 minutes ago so so let's just make this informal and have a nice discussion all right so kicking this off toastmasters 101 i've been at this for 20 years be 20 years in october so i've learned a few things over the years one of the things that I usually mention when people ask me about Toastmasters is I say that I learn something new at every meeting. And they say, oh, come on, every, you know, you've been doing this 20 years, you still learn something new every week? Absolutely. I'm going to talk about some of the things I've learned over the years. And even in the last year, when I started this year as district director, I thought I knew a lot about leadership. Well, I was kind of right. but I had no idea how much more there was to learn. And I'll give you some examples of that a little later. Many of our members spend years in Toastmasters without experiencing anything outside of their regular club meetings. Y'all know people like that? Yeah, yeah. People who just go to their regular weekly meeting or bi-weekly meeting, whatever it is, and they don't have a clue what goes on outside. Well. That's part of what we're going to talk about tonight is what goes on outside. So I'm going to talk about that. And then I want to circle back to the actual club meetings and how we can get the most out of that club meeting experience. So if we look at the overall structure of Toastmasters, we start with the members. It's all about the members. Several years ago, a guest speaker at one of our district events said something very profound. He said, members don't join Toastmasters. They join clubs. Did you ever think about that? They don't have a clue about Toastmasters International. And furthermore, they don't care, most of them. They care about what happens in their club meeting. So they, they join clubs, not Toastmasters International. That is why it is so important for clubs to remain healthy and strong so they can provide the best possible member experience. So I invite y'all right now, enter in chat an adjective or two or a phrase. How would you describe, how would you recognize a strong club if you saw one? So let's just see what y'all think. How would you describe a strong club? And I got to figure out how to see chat when I'm sharing. I think I can see that up here somewhere. Let's see, where did chat go? Chat, 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 there we go. There's chat. Okay, three things in there. Aha, work as a team, absolutely. We've probably all seen the club that didn't do that, where there was animosity and downright conflict between people. And they have a club success plan, imagine that. <laughs> if you don't have a plan, how do you know when you got there? And engaged members always. Okay, excellent. There's And consistent meetings, absolutely. Those are all signs that you have a good, strong club. Some other things that as a district leader, I might suggest that they send their leaders to training. Do their officers actually know what their jobs are? And do they know where the resources are to help them do those jobs? So those are things that I look for being an experienced district leader. I, I can recognize the clubs that are strong because they engage with the resources that are available for them, like the training for their club officers. And I have clicked over because I'm trying to work two different screens here. And every time I click on one screen, it, it advances the slide on the other. So you are now seeing the slide of the structure, the members and the clubs, the club is where it happens for the members. You're probably wondering what that red line is. And I have to confess, I got these slides from Leanna, 
she did PM 101 a while back and I got these slides from her and I decided we needed to redline them. The reason for that is to remind me and all of you that clubs are their own separate legal entities. They have their own tax ID number, they have their own bank account, they have their charter documents, a constitution, bylaws, they are a standalone legal entity. And that's what the members join. At the other end of this graphic, Toastmasters International is the umbrella organization, the nonprofit educational organization, which provides our educational program materials and support to the clubs. All of these different entities, the district, the division, and the area, we are actually extensions of Toastmasters International. We are not part of the club structure. We are part of Toastmasters International when we get up into these area, division, and district levels. So how many people do we have in all of these things? Well, we have 35 areas, and typically there are four to six clubs in an area. We have eight divisions. Typically, you have four to six areas in a division. We have eight divisions in our district. I don't even know how many districts we're up to worldwide now. But overall, we have 126 paid clubs in our district. And paid clubs in good standing, that means they have at least eight members. Right now, we have another 16 clubs with less than eight members. And if those people can get back up to the uh, minimum of eight, then that'll give us a lose. Do the math here. What is that? 142 clubs. So we're actually not doing all that badly, considering the challenges we had this year with the pandemic and all of that, because our base starting the year was 149. We currently have 142. Some of them need to get a few more members to be back up to good standing, but we haven't really lost that many clubs this year. Now, those of us who've been around a while, we will tell you that being an area director is the best job in Toastmasters. Why? Because this puts you on the front lines closest to where the action is in the clubs. You are the first line of support for the clubs. So you help them with their questions or their speech contests, anything that they need help with, you, you, you provide that support. And area directors are supposed to visit their clubs at least twice a year. We highly recommend you do it more often than that, at least quarterly, but at least twice you have to visit them. I found that to be quite an eye-opening experience when I was an area director because all the clubs follow the same Toastmasters program, but they have a lot of autonomy in how they implement their meetings and run their meetings. Keep in mind what I said before, each club is a separate legal entity. So they do have some autonomy in how they run things. And not all clubs do all three elements, prepared speeches, table topics and evaluations, like feedbackers, for example, they do prepared speeches and lots of evaluations. They don't focus so much on the table topics. At least they don't, they didn't used to. I haven't been there for a while. But I remember my first club visit after becoming an area director. I should be embarrassed about this, but it was a learning exercise. I started barking at them about sending their club officers to training and submitting their dues in a timely manner. And I see Leanna smiling there, yes. And uh, fortunately, my division director happened to accompany me on that first visit. And as we were walking out to the car, he reminded me that the old saying, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. I can actually I absolutely guarantee that you will broaden your horizons and you will learn new leadership skills, including not to bark at people when you take on the job as an area director. Now, the division director, that's just the next step up. They don't have to do quite so many day-to-day -day activities like an area director because they are acting as a guidance committee, if you will, for the area directors. 
theoretically, they have been an area director. Well, not absolutely necessary, but hopefully they have some experience so that they can give guidance to the area directors when they run into trouble. And then at the district level, that's where I am and Eldred and Lori who are on here, we're at the district level and I continue to learn new things in these roles. And we'll get into more detail about that in a bit. And then it all goes up to international where we get all of our educational materials and all of the support that they provide. And did I see a chat? Let me look here real quick. Okay, yeah, so I, I'm not totally in the dark when it comes to um, <laughs> feedbackers. They're still doing what I thought they did. Okay, district trio. The top line here is the current trio with less than a month to go, I might add. Uh, we have the club growth director, Lori Anderson, and we have Eldred Brown, the program quality director, and me as the district director. Jim Robson is the incoming club growth director elect. Lori is the program quality director elect, and Eldred is the district director elect. My job this year as district director was to oversee all of these different director levels, including the area directors, division directors, and the two teammates on the trio. And part of that involved coaching, meeting with them regularly, providing feedback, developing the budget with them, developing the district success plan. A lot of work went into making this year run. For example, we have a trio call once a week. We meet every week for an hour. And that's in addition to our club meetings and everything else we're doing. And during that week, we talk about where we are with all the district success plan goals and objectives and what we need to do next. Now, part of my job is to coach people and try to develop their leadership skills. But guess what? That's a two-way street. Earlier this year, I was talking with one of our people. I'll, I won't mention names, but I was talking with one of our people. And the subject of uh, one particular program came up and I expressed that I was disappointed that we hadn't made more progress toward that goal. Well, I got feedback later that disappointed is, has some emotional baggage. Can't you just see that parent wagging their finger? I'm disappointed in you, young man or young lady. And so I got to thinking about that. And I'll tell you what, that, that feedback stuck. And I will never, ever, ever in a leadership position tell someone that I'm disappointed in the progress that is being made. So I had to think about that. What word could I use instead of disappointed? I came up with the word concerned. I'm concerned that we haven't met this milestone yet, or we haven't made more progress in the, toward this goal. And that is more of a neutral term. And that's the whole point of being a good leader. And a lesson I learned just this year when I thought I knew everything there was to know about leadership, which is why I put up my hand to be a district director. I thought, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake because I know it all. Oh, heck no, I don't. I continue to learn every day, every time I have a meeting, just like I say, I learn something new at every weekly club meeting. So that's a personal story of a lesson I learned in this past year. Hopefully, I have done some coaching and helped all of these people, these 35 area directors, eight division directors, and my fellow TRIO members. Hopefully, I have helped them develop their leadership skills over this next year. Of course, I don't go away. You didn't get any say in this. You didn't have to vote me in, but I'm now the, I will soon be the immediate past district director. So I will still be acting as a mentor for my replacement, Eldred. And hopefully I can make his year go a little smoother. All right, now we're going to talk about getting kind of back to the club as our central focus, but what happens beyond the club? What's happening Friday night and Saturday this week? Toastmasters Leadership Institute. This is where we train our club officers and it is open to all members 
who want to come and take advantage of the various breakout sessions that we offer. So Toastmasters Leadership Institute, that is another thing that you can do to develop your skills and learn in Toastmasters. Likewise, the annual conference. We have all kinds of breakout sessions, lots of useful information, keynote speakers. There's so much to be gained and friends to be made. You see these people at the conference each year. Back when we used to have two conferences a year, I used to look forward to seeing people from district-wide, people that I didn't see on a weekly basis in my club meeting. I've made lifelong friends during my time in Toastmasters. An annual conference is a good time to catch up with them. Visiting other clubs. Zoom made this possible. We can visit other clubs, and I know many people who have made a goal to visit clubs all around the world. Somebody started off on a campaign of 90 clubs in 90 days. I think that's an AA expression, but in this case, it applies to Toastmasters just as well. And with Zoom, through the power of Zoom, and if you want to wake up in the middle of the night, you can visit a club somewhere else in the world, anywhere. I mentioned what an eye-opening experience it is when you visit other clubs as an area director because you see how they do things a little different than you do. For example, my home club, we have a segment on our agenda called, Did You Know? That's where club officers can sign up and have this one to two minute segment where they can share something that you don't want to get lost in the announcements at the end of the meeting. You can talk about uh, our lending library we have. You can talk about, uh, oh, this weekend is TLI. Be sure you go. Don't forget, get it on your calendar. So the, the, each club has its own flavor and that's something that you can learn by visiting other clubs. Contests. We just finished our fabulous contest season. And you'll learn something new from contests. As a participant, as a contestant, you certainly push yourself to the limit and you're going to learn new things there. But what about the audience? You get to hear the best of the best. You get to pick up ideas. And it's perfectly fine to steal ideas, if you will, in Toastmasters. You hear somebody do something, say, oh, that was really good. I'm going to use that. Now, if you are quoting them, you certainly want to give them credit, cite your source, but just in terms of like a gesture or a phrase, some words they use, if you see something that works, use it. And you can learn those things by attending contests. And of course, we had... This is our inaugural year of the Wednesday's wonderful webinars, isn't it? We didn't do this last year, did we? No, this year was the kickoff for that. And um, this year is kind of a blur, folks. It's been a long year, but we've had these wonderful webinars and not just the first Wednesday of the month. We've had other webinars sprinkled throughout the month. So there is no shortage of learning opportunities in Toastmasters in our district. Now, getting back to the meeting. First of all, this question here, why sign up for meeting roles? Anybody want to throw out a suggestion why you should sign up for a meeting role? You can just unmute and say, or put it in chat or whatever. Because it's fun. It's fun, absolutely. Now, let me throw that back at you. How much fun is it if you're the club officers if nobody signs up? Not much fun. Not much fun. Yes. So we want to have fun. Yes, absolutely. We want to have fun. And we've probably all been to meetings where they kick it off, they open it up and they say, well, let's see, we still need a grammarian and a timer and a general evaluator. And we only have one speaker. And oh, by the way, we need an evaluator for that speaker. That is not fun. No, we don't want to do that. And then you also wind up with the case in where you sometimes double or triple up on roles. I was the general evaluator, the timer, and the grammarian at a meeting one time. That was not fun. It was challenging and not fun. I have also been in the position where I had to give a speech, and then I immediately had to keep notes and evaluate the next speaker after me. That's not fun either. When you put your heart and soul into giving your speech, you want to take that deep breath when you sit down and you're finished. You don't want to have to then immediately start evaluating the next person. So, or maybe even worse, have to evaluate someone 
and you're the next speaker up. Maybe that's not such a bad thing because how many of you have ever done this? Say you're the second speaker and you're supposed to be listening to the first speaker, but what are you doing instead? Running your speech in your brain? Okay, well, if you're evaluating that first speaker, you can't do that. So maybe there are some benefits of evaluating and speaking at the same meeting. You know, it, it all depends on how you look at it. Remember what uh, Richard Peck said at our conference. He said, change your perspective and you change your outcome. So it's all boiling down to your perspective, how you look at it. Well, how to sign up? If you don't know, find out. Most clubs use either free toast toast or easy speak. And both of those have mechanisms for signing up. And if you don't use either of those, or if you do use those websites and you don't know how to sign up, ask one of your club officers. They'll be happy to help you. How do you prepare for your role? Something besides logging in one minute before the meeting starts. You know, you should take that seriously. People pay money to belong to this organization. This is an educational organization. We pay money to be here to learn something. If you show up not prepared for your role, I take that personally. You're cheating me, <laughs> okay? I'm paying money to learn something. And so I want you to do a good job and be prepared so I can get the most out of it. And how do you prepare? If you've not done a role before, how do you prepare? There are resources. Talk to your mentor, talk to a club officer, talk to a fellow club member. Go online. There are all kinds of manuals and supporting documentation to help you prepare for your meeting and for your role. Okay, moving on. The Distinguished Club Program. Remember that guy I said that members don't join Toastmasters, they join clubs? He said something else that kind of took me off at the knees. He, because I was a district leader and I was all gung ho about, we've got to make the numbers. We got to make the numbers. We got to be distinguished. He said, members don't join Toastmasters to make your club or your district distinguished. That's not why they are here. He said, if you do the program, if you work the Toastmasters program, these things take care of themselves. If people are meeting their educational objectives, they are making speeches, you will get these level two awards. You will get those check marks that will make you a distinguished club. So work the program. Don't worry about the distinguished club program. Worry about it a little bit, but don't let that be your driving force. Work the program. The numbers will take care of themselves. Likewise, the membership numbers. If people visit and they see you having a great time and they hear some very interesting speeches, they will join, then they will become a new member and you'll check off these goals. These last two goals, these are freebies. Go to officer's training, bang, you checked off a goal. Submit your dues, bang, you checked off a goal. These take a matter of uh, you know a couple of hours or a few hours at a TLI session or uh, getting online and submitting your dues. These are not hard to do and you check off a couple of goals. So like I said, if you do what you're supposed to do, this takes care of itself, all right? So how do you get going in this? How do you achieve your goals? Well, first of all, we're in pathways now, so you have to be on a path if you're going to get any of these educational awards. And that's why we're here, we're here to learn. So be sure you have your path. I currently have three paths open. I'm kind of working three in parallel. Get your speeches scheduled. I haven't scheduled a speech in my home club for quite some time because I've been preoccupied with district leadership things, but I am now going to get back into the program and start scheduling speeches. I used to try to schedule a speech once a month. That's a pretty good goal if you can do that. Seek other opportunities. I've talked about leadership. First step is club officer. Once you serve as a club officer, ideally club president or club 
vice president of education, those two officers are voting members of the district council, then you are qualified to step into district leadership roles. You can become an area director. Then you can become a division director. Then you can become part of the trio. Or you can serve as a finance manager or an admin manager or a PR manager. There are lots and lots and lots of opportunities to step into leadership roles. And our district director elect, sitting there on the top right corner of my screen, he is filling those positions as we speak. So if you are interested in serving in some of those roles, contact him. I'm sure he would love to hear from you. And what's this all go toward? The Distinguished Toastmaster Award. That's, I tell people that's the Eagle Scout of Toastmasters. And they all go, oh yeah, okay, they nod, they know what that means. Most people know what that means. So the Distinguished Toastmaster Award in Pathways, you have to complete two full paths. You have to do a district leadership project. You have to do a special project. And think of these, that's kind of like the uh, old high performance leadership project. And guess what? Less than 1% of Toastmasters earn their DTM. I did a little exercise. I said, 1%, that sounds awfully low. So I pulled our current membership list and looked, and we currently have about 10% of our district, our DTMs. So where's that 1% number come from? Well, not everybody sticks around. Of all the Toastmasters who come and go, less than 1% actually achieve that highest recognition possible, the DTM, all right? So you could be one of those. Let's see, how many DTMs do we have on here? Let's see, one, two, three, four. I, I see five, I see six. I, and I don't know all of you, but I, I see at least a half of us are DTMs, I think. So the rest of you, if you aren't there yet, you have something to work for. We'll wrap this up with a quote from a past international president, Helen Blanchard. She said, if you get out of Toastmasters all that there is to get out of Toastmasters, you will never get out of Toastmasters. And I firmly believe that. Paraphrasing our founder, Ralph Smedley, we join Toastmasters to learn and we stay to teach. I am a living, breathing example of that. I am here serving in district leadership because this is how I give back. I've gained so much from this program in terms of things I have learned personally and friends I have made. I am here to give back. And guess what? I keep learning while I'm here.